this is covering what causes a circuit to trip, right? You have well-defined parameters, well-defined formula, which informs you, this is a point where I trip the circuit, right? This is the point where I say, I'm not gonna send any calls. That's clear now. We're gonna tackle the second problem. Circuit is tripped. What do you do now? What do you do when the requests are coming in and uh, you don't wanna call the failing API anymore? How do you handle the request? Let's say this is the use case, right? You have um, the movie info service is slow because the movie DB service is slow, right? This path is completely slow. Now, the circuit breaker in the movie catalog service says, okay, I need to stop calling movie info service. It's obvious the circuit is broken there, but what does it do? Requests is coming in. Requests are coming in for getting the movie information. What is poor movie catalog service to do? How can it respond to those requests? Well, the answer is fallback. Like somebody guessed in the, in the chat window, you need to have a fallback mechanism. You need to have an alternate mechanism so that there is something else that these microservices can do when a circuit breaks. So it's a part of adding a circuit breaker. You're not just saying when a circuit breaks, you're also adding the code to say, okay, when a circuit breaks, don't do the usual thing that I've asked you to do, do this other thing, all right? That's a fallback. Now, what is that other thing? What does it look like? There are a bunch of things you can do. First thing you can do, the simplest th way thing you can do is throw an error, all right? You can say, okay, something failed. I'm not calling that microservice anymore, but a request is coming in. I cannot call that service, so you get an error back. All those requests get an error response. Is that a good idea? Probably not because of various reasons, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit, but throwing an error is probably the last resort you wanna take, right? Don't throw an error. A better approach is to fall, have a fallback default response, right? This is a little smarter. It's, uh, it's like you have the actual response that you need to get back. You're not gonna make a call to the actual microservice to get that response. How about like a hard-coded response that you send back? when the circuit is stripped. It's not ideal, but it's something. So whoever is calling it is gonna get something that they can use. And maybe there is a way they can detect that this is a fallback response and do different things, but that's also not recommended. It's like when you get a fallback response, it's it goes through the happy path scenario and it's a business as usual for it, right? So having a default fallback response is a good option when a circuit breaks. A cooler option, is to save previous responses in a cache and use that when possible, right? This would be the best way to handle it. Let's say you're making calls to microservice, let's say user, user information, right? Pass in user ID, get user information from the user microservice, and that microservice goes down. Guess what? You would have saved a cache of all that user information, and when the next time a user information request comes in for something you already have in the cache, and that microservice is down, right? The circuit is broken, you just pull it up from the cache the end user won't even know that that microservice is broken, right? You're getting sensible information. It may not be valid, it may not be accurate. Maybe the user information has changed, but you get sensible response. And that's super cool because again, like I said, the end user won't even know that the actual microservice is down. They're getting some response back, all right? So these are the ways in which you can handle uh, fallbacks. So you have three ways in which you can handle fallbacks. The first one, definitely not recommended unless it's absolutely required. Second one is definitely recommended. Third one is like a bonus 